Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Prehistory in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons and my channel members from our sister channel over at History in the Dark. You are the reason why this content remains somewhat disproportionate. And today, we are going to discuss a rather weird creature that has a really nonsense backstory when it comes to figuring out just what in the world it even was. This is the story of the Tanistrophius genus. Tanistrophius was a 6 meter long, or 20 foot, reptile, we think. More on that later that date back to the Middle and Late Triassic period. Their most definable trait is their insanely long neck, relative to their body size. And at a glance, you might think they might be related to the dinosaurs' sauropods, or the aquatic reptiles' plesiosaurs. But Tanistrophius is its own thing, and is not closely related to either of them, beyond being reptiles. Again, we think. They were first discovered in 1886, by Francesco Bassani. His initial species was not actually called Tanistrophius. He classified it as a Tribosodon longobardicus, because his interpretation of the rather unusual fossil was that the animal had really elongated fingers. This would allow them to fly, like a flying squirrel. That was his interpretation of the remains. But in later years, it was discovered that this is absolutely wrong. What we know for sure is that the Tenistrophius did not fly, regardless of what species it particularly was. Tribolosodon longobardicus was reclassified as Tenistrophius longobardicus due to work in the late 20s and early 30s by Bernard Pyre. Currently, only Longobardicus and Eticus are the only officially recognized species of Tenistrophius. Now that we knew that it had this just ludicrously long neck, and it was located in semi-aquatic areas, the issue of exactly what it was, wasn't over. Now we believe now that they're reptiles, but for a while it was thought they could be either amphibians, or perhaps semi-aquatic reptiles, because they were so close to shore. And unlike plesiosaurs, which had very obvious fins indicating a permanently aquatic lifestyle, Tanistrophius has legitimate feet, also that really long neck. And the neck is really what hung people up. It wasn't as flexible as you'd think it would be. They weren't like a snake head, and would have been rather stiff. Further studies show that they probably couldn't have held it upright very easily, or at all, if they were on land. So after a few decades of debate, the thinking got to, okay, well maybe they were completely aquatic reptiles. But then how would they move underwater? Again, they had feet. Well, here's what paleontologists think about them now. Most will tell you that they were probably completely permanently aquatic creatures, due to the location of their nostrils, as well as the location of many of their remains. But their aquatic lifestyle was restricted to shallow regions, which is why they've been found close to shore. The thinking goes that their necks were used to sneak up on schools of fish, who wouldn't notice them quite as easily if it was just their head and neck, when compared to their rather large bulky bodies. And further studies have shown that their feet would have actually been rather flexible. The thinking goes that they didn't so much swim, as much as hopped. They would literally push off the bottom of the shallow coastal bays where they hunted, and hop themselves forward. That's one theory, anyway. They could have also had webbing in between their toes of some kind and swam that way, but either way, it's believed that because their necks would not be reasonably used while they were on land, they probably spent most of their time, if not all of it, in the water. Though the truth is, we're probably never going to know completely 100% for sure, because they died out hundreds of millions of years ago. And I think we can all agree that whether or not they could fly, or were amphibians or reptiles, were partially on land, permanently on land, or permanently in the water, that neck is pretty weird. Long neck boy. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.